What's up YouTube? Welcome to the Leprechaun Gaming Channel. And today we are starting a little new journey in streaming, which is going to be switching from Streamlabs OBS over to OBS Studio. Mostly because I've heard that eventually most big streamers do. So I figured it's better to start here in OBS Studio than it is to really start in Streamlabs. One of the big differences that I've heard is that OBS Studio is a lot harder to set up your personal notifications for new followers, new subscribers, new donations. But overall, from all the videos I've watched, I've found that Stream Elements is one of the best ways to do it. And today in my Stream Elements, I was going through, I was looking at how to make new overlays, how to make your own custom overlays, and I found out that you can add custom CSS to your notifications. And personally, I went to school for web development where I learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all that good stuff. So I was like, I'm ready. This is going to be awesome. So today we're doing a quick little video on how you can take the standard notification for new follower, subscriber, donator, any of those, and make it spin 360 while it's on your screen. Also, quick reminder, I do stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and occasionally on the weekends if I don't have any external plans. You can also look here for weekly updates as I plan on doing quite a few videos on all the different transformations and all the different animations you can set up for your notifications. So let's get right into it. We are now over here at streamelements.com and if you don't already have an account, you can sign up for free. It is a free service and I'll put a link in the description below so you can find the correct site. Once you do have an account created, it'll ask you to authorize your Twitch, YouTube, Facebook account, whatever you're using to stream so they can create you a nice little dashboard. We'll go into my dashboard. We can see here I don't have any analytics because I have not actually streamed yet with the new OBS Studio that I'll be using. But here on the left, we can see alerts and overlays, and we'll want to go down to my overlays. On the top, you should see any overlays that you've already started creating. At below those, you'll find theme and gallery overlays that you can download for free. There's a lot of free stuff. Please go check that out as well. But today we're going to be creating a brand new one. The new follower slash single spin is what we'll be looking at. So let's edit. Emulate. As you can see, the image flips in, does one turn, and then flips back out. It's not a very fancy animation by any means, but I do think it is still light years ahead of just a stagnant image showing up on your screen, which is how alerts currently show up if you just do the generic. And we'll take a look at that in a second. So starting a new alert, we'll go back, create blank overlay, pick your resolution. I want mine to be the highest possible. Start. We'll come down to the left and hit this blue plus button. Go all the way up to alerts, alert box. And now you should see this blue alert box on your screen. It'll be whatever the default size is when it starts. On the left, you can see follower, subscriber, tip, cheer. All of these are marked default. And that means all of these alerts will show up within this one box. A lot of people will tell you to set up separate overlays or separate alerts for each of these. So you don't have to have one follower going at a time and then one subscriber. So we're gonna be just doing follower alerts in this box today. So we will unselect all of those, come down to our position, sizing and styling. I would recommend putting this at the screen resolution that you stream at. I personally do 1920 by 1080p. From there, we'll go back into settings and we'll see this nice gear here at the end of the follower alert and we'll click on that to customize. Right now, the follower alert is this heart animation, which is the default video used by Stream Elements. But we want to use our own imaging and get uh, a similar effect. So we're going to clear that video. We're going to get an image, not a video, an image. Uh, you can upload any real image you want. I have a PNG file of the leprechaun head that I want to be using. I will go ahead and hit submit. And let's take a look at what that looks like right now. Just stagnant. It just shows up and it hangs out for a few seconds and then it will eventually go away. Which, I don't know, I think is kind of boring. 
like really boring. So let's spice it up a little bit. We're going to want to right click on the image itself up here on the left and copy the image address. And you only really need to do this when you're doing custom CSS and I'll show you why. So once you have that copied, we'll come down to enable custom CSS and we'll open the CSS editor. This is now showing you a raw text coding editor essentially. So in here we'll see HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and fields. In the HTML, we are going to come, we're going to change one thing. This image right here that says the source is streamelements.com static alert box default GIF, which is a dancing shark, I believe. If you don't want a dancing shark and you want whatever image or video that you uploaded, you need to replace this with the link that we just copied from the top left. So now we have the stream elements uploads. So it is pulling the image that you directly uploaded. Um, I think this is the best way to upload an image. You can pull from Google Drive, but it may not show up in your OBS and other things. Um, stream elements library is the best place to keep your images. It's local, it's easy. So just do that. Moving forward, we'll go into the CSS. If you don't know what CSS is, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet which is basically a sheet that determines all the fonts, colors, all the visual effects of a screen, starting from the top and going all the way down. So we're not going to mess with any of the predetermined code here. We're just going to add a couple lines of our own. It is about 12 lines of code and I'm going to write them out right now. We will fast forward through this part of the video so you don't have to struggle with me as I try and type on this mechanical keyboard. So. We are back after typing all that out. Typing on a mechanical keyboard is awful compared to my regular ergonomic. So thanks for bearing with me on that one. But let's go over what we've typed out so far. So far we have the image WebKit animation. We want this animation to be on a 10 second interval, which means it'll take 10 seconds to complete the full animation. And we want it to be infinite. So once it completes, it should just keep going if our alert has not finished yet. Underneath there in our WebKit keyframes, we want it to transform, rotating on the Y axis, starting at zero degrees and going to 360 degrees. Now on a 2D image, that's like it flips over twice. And remember your image, if that's what you're going to be using this for, will be the same on the front and the back. So it'll do two full spins. It may look like 720, but it's really just doing 360. Then underneath that for the keyframes, we are defining the same properties of rotate on the Y axis from the zero de degrees. And actually this should be 360 degrees. And now let's go ahead and test if this works. All of this code will be in a text file that I have linked in the description so you can copy and paste it. You do not have to try and write all this out yourself any kind of typo from an extra space to incorrect punctuation or anything like that will cause it to fail completely. So if you're not comfortable writing code yet, please just copy paste. We'll go ahead and hit done. Let's go ahead and save at this point. Save my awesome stuff. Save, go ahead and hit emulate, follower event. And as you can see, our head is now spinning. And like I said, it's going to go around twice. It kind of looks weird because the image is front and back the same. Personally, I think that's too long of an alert. I like the speed, but the alert itself just feels like it drags. So on the left side, we can change our alert duration. So we can change that to five, which is half of the interval that we set our actual rotating speed to. So we can emulate follower event. It just goes around once and then after that it disappears. I think that's a great timing. Feel free to obviously customize however you feel your alerts should be. 
So we want to spice this up a little bit more though. And the great thing about customizing your own CSS is you can still use the animation settings that comes with stream elements when it comes to an alert coming in and out of your stream. So if you go down to the bottom, we can see animation settings, enter animation. How do we want this stream? How do we want this animation to enter our stream? Let's look at, we're doing some flipping already. So let's do flip in X. You have to change the duration to more than zero seconds. If you leave it at zero, it will not do the animation. We'll do flip out X. And once again, one, emulate all of our event. It comes in, it does one rotation, and then it goes out. And it's that easy. You have now created your very own spinning first kind of entry level follower animation with any image you need. So let's go ahead and save again. And if this is your first time, we're going to go ahead and show you how to put this on your OBS studio. So once you've saved, there is this little chain link icon that says copy overlay URL. We'll go ahead and copy that. Now that we're back in our OBS studio, we're going to go ahead and deactivate my game capture to get rid of that super annoying infinite display. And we're going to add the scene that we just created as an overlay to our stream. You're going to come down here to sources. You'll see this little plus button. You'll hit browser. It'll ask you to name your new scene. As you can see, I already have a couple that live in my overlay folder down here. But for this example, we'll create a new one called test. Here is the default URL that it'll give you. We're going to delete that and we're going to copy in the URL that we got from stream elements when we hit the little link. From here, we'll want to make it the same size as our alert that we designed in stream elements, which was the size of our screen, which for me is 1920 by 1080p. Once this is all set up, you should be able to hit OK. And this is now on your stream you actually can't see anything because a new follower event has not happened. The good news is, is that the live events that you can test in stream elements will actually show up here as well when you're not live. So let's go ahead and split our screen. If you didn't know, you can use your window key left and right to split your screen in half perfectly. Super useful. Anyways, we can come down here to emulate. Make sure preview live on stream is set want to hit emulate follower event and as you can see here we now have this emulating on our stream obviously that was a little big so i would recommend adjusting the size down if need be follower event you know now it's in the corner and i can move this red box to line up exactly where i want it to be on my stream and that's it that's how easy it is to design a nice little spinning type design for your followers, subs, donators, which looks just so much better again than the flat image that will come standard. If you found this video useful or this inspired you to start coding and learning some CSS to do your own notifications, please let me know. Please comment below what you think was great, what could use some work. And if you have an idea for an animation you'd like to see, please let me know. I'm going to be spending a lot of time working on all the different CSS animations I can make, maybe even breaking into JavaScript type stuff. So please like, subscribe, follow if you found this video helpful, and I'll see you guys next week for the next one. See ya.